put a uh, big old ice pack on the back of this VR camera so that it will uh, not overheat. So anyhow, I'm going to cover. I'm going to read through the document and then I'll I'll comment some. I've got about 30, 40 minutes before I have to be at work, and uh, I don't have any problem with telling people what I do for a living. Um, people will just push me off and say, well, what kind of professional are you? You're not even in our industry. You're not blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, I am a, I'm a nomad in the desert telling you the way of the future and how things are going to be. And, uh, years down the road, you'll just look back on it and you'll say, well, damn, he knew what he was talking about. Um, that's all I care about. I don't care about, I only care about future relevance um, somewhere down the road. I don't care about relevance right now. Um, you, you'll you figure that out some way or another that I have, but that I'm relevant to the process. Um, I'll just say that uh, I was involved with Blender from the very beginning, and I was the guy who pushed Ton Rosendahl um, to develop it and to make it into open source. I had I had won an award from Alias Wavefront for making an animation using Wavefront software, which Alias believed couldn't be used for anything productive. Um, Wavefront was sold as a package, a scientific visualization package for scientists. Uh, they were just trying to make inroads into the animation sector. And... Um, and uh, not very many students could ever figure it out, um, as is not many many people could figure out Blender. And I'm one of the I'm I'm one of the few people that can handle complex packages. Whenever I put my mind to it, I can I can uh, put up with a, a a great amount of complexity and learn things that uh, other people would struggle with. Um, And what I'm really good at is seeing things in the future, seeing things, uh, seeing solutions. I'm really good at that. And I could go into depth about that, but I'm not. I'm going to cover VR and what I can see as problems right now. Virtual reality is a different medium, being that it says needs a language and standards communication all its own. It, due to the lack of respect for the audience, which is obvious. Um, if you've ever seen some of the content that's out there, it leads, it has led to its early demise. Um, it will lead to its early demise if people don't take a concern in how to deal with the audience, um, how to deal with the camera. Because this camera is more the audience than any camera has been before because people feel like they're right there. And because they feel they're right there, right there with you, um, they expect you to treat them just as if they were there in, in person, in reality. And you see them as an object. So you're pretty close to being a psychopath and that you can't identify with the camera as being a person. And until you can do that, until you can see this, there are people sitting behind this camera, you will not be able to uh, um, communicate to them and express a story. Uh, you have to, you have to treat the camera as being another person, and you have to plan for them, um, plan to to satisfy their needs, uh, to to need to know and express to them uh, in, a, in a language uh, that works with VR. Okay. Um, if story is in this medium to succeed, they must know how to express their vision in this art form and pander the consumers of the new media. So they can't pander to the old media. They can't say, oh, I'm going to do this for 2D and VR content. I'm going to do this for all kinds of content, and I'm just going to use VR the way I use 2D. 
Um, you can't because you can't frame content anymore. They can see everything. You can see all the junk on my floor and everything here. I'm not really respecting you um, in, the, in the sense that I'm giving you a clean space uh, to, to observe me. But um, I'm, I don't really have much concern for you um, being in this spot because, um, well, I don't really have the time to clean up and make this place uh, um, to, to, to make this place less disgusting. Um, and I understand there's a disgust there. But I'm just saying, overcome that. Try to pay attention to what it is that I'm saying. First rule of VR. And I'm coming up with these rules. Um, these are not set in stone. Just think about them. The audience are not owls. Don't present media in a way that requires people to turn their heads excessively. This goal is achieved in two ways. Developers of VR headsets... Um, developer of the, the headset's user interface must offer methods of navigating 360 degree content without head tracking. So you can't rely on people to turn their heads anymore to look at content that's occurring behind them. Um, treat them like they're sitting in a seat that can't swivel. Um, offer them that extra content um, for future viewings, but don't expect them to see everything all wherever it is that you want to put their, put their attention. They're not going to follow you. Um, and if they do, if they end up following you for everything that you do in the VR, um, in the, in the 360 space, um, they're going to get next strain and it's going to be a bad experience for them. That's the reason why I prefer to use VR 180 content. I think 360 um, has its has its place, but it only you can only use 360 if you have completely immersed the user in in a in an experience where every where the whole 360 is filled up with content. If it is not, it doesn't merit uh, the use of 360. The 360 is really just saying, I'm a lazy cinematographer and I don't see, I'm a lazy storyteller and I don't see much point in, in uh, directing people at what they should be looking at. I, um, and see, it's because you don't have a cameraman because the camera hand can't hide behind the camera. When you were dealing with 360 content, um, you, you're, you can't rely on people to be looking wherever your actors are going. Um, you've got to think about, okay, why would I use the 360 medium um, to tell a story? And that could be done with the 180 medium. Why am I using a 360 in the first place? And so you have to ask your question. You have to ask those questions. Whenever you're presenting content to people, you have to ask, why would I use this medium to sell that story? Because that's going to determine how you're going to use the medium. And it's going to determine if you use the medium in the first place. Okay. Developers of VR headsets. Uh, okay, so I already said that. So they need to have equipment in place that allows them allows the user to turn their head artificially um, to look at the content that might be sitting behind them. Um, if it's not offered, then they're going to uh, suffer from neck strain, and it'll just be a bad experience for the for the audience. Okay. Um, you and there's a number of ways to use this that I thought of some. I said uh, use the laser pointer, the little hand controller, to adjust the facing orientation of the headset. Okay, so if I if my content's behind me, I can just pr press and click. I can uh, I'll get you. I'll show you what one looks like. Say this is it. This is it. This is for one of my headsets. I've got three of them. 
and uh, to orient my view, I can use this bottom button and hold it, and it will reorient my my uh, interface towards the back. But that doesn't do that for the apps. That only does that does that whenever I'm in the operating environment, um, the 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 upper main uh, operating system environment of the Oculus. Um, I can do that, but I can't do that with the apps. Um, some apps will not offer that capability. And so you can't direct it behind you, hold that button down and have it reorient your whole interface experience towards the content. But that would be the way that you would solve that problem. And so it's really, um, it relies on the, the app developers to come up with this. And um, if they don't, then they just can just expect that people are not going to adopt their um, their um, apps and probably will stop buying their apps altogether, even watching them. Um, it's like saying you're going to uh, um, you're going to pander to an audience of zero because they're not going to be interested in whatever you have to provide because you're not offering them a method by which to reorient themselves without having to turn their head to avoid neck strain. They'll say, uh, screw this, fuck you, I'm leaving, I'm going to go to something else. So, um, give users the ability to use rear rear mirrors when detecting content behind them. So, say you could create like a little image here, and the user could just pop up an image and then, uh, or pop up a, a little mirror and see what's behind them and see if it really merits turning around to look at it, or if they could uh, use this thing to direct at that. I think this is the best solution though. Provide users with a small spherical radar. So you imagine a radar that's sitting in front of them, a spherical thing that shows the content that they're missing. And then they can just determine whether or not they want to watch there. They can watch it on the spherical thing and say, okay, this is what's going on behind me. Or they could turn that thing around, you know, turn this controller around and it would shift to that, to that perspective. And then they, they could be looking at that. If you're worried about them getting motion sickness, what about if they were sitting inside of a, a vehicle and the vehicle turn, uh, turned with, and the content changed around it, they would get a feeling that they're inside of a vehicle and that they're not, you know, they would have a point of reference. I think it's not having the point of reference is what causes people to get motion sickness. It's like being in a, it's like being in a helicopter rather versus being in a car. When you're in a car and you're going in a direction, you can expect, you know, where you're going at what speed and you know what the content is going to do as you're going down that road. Um, you have um, a, a small window to look out of and you have things that are staying in place while the content is moving past your window. But whenever you have less of that around you, you have, um, you have less, it, it, it makes it, the experience more scary because it looks like you're, you're going to fall out of it. Um, um, you, you don't feel like you're um, safe. Okay. So um, there's got to be ways to deal with motion sickness. And uh, I think that it has something to do with, um, with being able to rely on something in the environment to be, to be a constant. And so that you're probably in a spaceship and you're watching the content go by and you're turning to see the content. Um, or if you had a radar, then you could see where you were looking at any particular time. So I'm going to stop the content here and start it up again uh, so that, uh, so that uh, this doesn't end up being a really long video and so that I can uh, 